Today we discuss Puwao. The Puwao stem is the passive voice counterpart to the PL stem. Now, if the PL is diagnostically featured, at least in the perfect, by a Hirek and a Dagesh, not so much the Tsere, but kind of the Tsere, not really. So the Hirek and the and the Dagesh. The Puwao replaces the Hirik with a U-class vowel, kibitz, and it retains the Dagesh. That is the Puwao. So the PL intensifies in large part, okay? The Puwao does the same thing except it's in the passive voice, meaning it receives action. Okay, there's a difference between he slaughtered and he was slaughtered. That's the difference of the passive voice. That's what the Puwao is. So you know everything you need to know about Puwao right off the bat because you've understood, you've learned the PL, but now you just need to be able to recognize the Puwao conjugation. Okay, so let's take a look. Using katal, we have pl, katel, puwal, kutal. pl, we have kitla, puwal, we have kutla. pl, we have katalta, puwal, we have kutalta. pl, we have katalt, puwal, we have kutalt. PL, we have Katalti. Puel, we have Kutalti. PL, we have Kitlu. Puel, we have Kutlu. PL, we have Kitaltem. Puel, we have Kutaltem. PL, we have Kitalten. Puwao, we have Kutalten. PL, we have Kitalnu. Puwao, we have Kutalnu. So, U class vowel replaces the Hirik, but we still have Dagesh. Now, that's for the perfect. Consider the imperfect. PL, we have Yukatel. Puwao, we have Yukatal. PL, we have Tikatel. Puwao, we have Tikutal. PL, we have Tikatel. Puwao, we have Tikutal. PL, we have Tikatli. Puwao, we have Tikutli. PL, we have Akatel. Puwao, we have Akutal. PL, we have Yikatlu. Puwao, we have Yikutlu. PL, we have Tikatelna. Puwao, we have Tikutalna. PL, we have Katlu. Puwao, we have Tikutlu. PL, we have Tikatelna. Puwao, we have Tikutalna. PL, we have Nikatel. Puwao, we have Nikutal. So we see the same thing as we did with PL, in which the vowel beneath our prefix is a Shava. Our first root consonant takes a U class vowel. Okay, in this case, kibbutz. And our second root consonant takes dagesh. Now, the puwal does not have imperative. It does not have infinitive. Makes it even easier to learn. When it comes to the participle, it bears the same features that we've seen before. We have our mem, mem prefix, but we still have kibbutz under the first root consonant. And of course, we have our dogesh forte. In the PL, we have make a tail. In the puwal, mukutal. 
In the PL, we have Mekateleth. In the Pu'al, we have Mekuteleth. In the PL, we have Mekatlim. In the Pu'al, we have Mekutalim. In the PL, we have Mekatloth. In the Pu'al, we have Mekutaloth. To translate the Pu'al participle, instead of to be, being. Translate with being. Being slaughtered. But that's for strong verbs. What about weak verbs? Well, guess what? It's just as simple as in the PL. We're still going to see our kibbits. We're still going to see our dogesh forte. Uh, wherever the dogesh forte can exist. We'll see some virtual doubling. We'll see some compensatory lengthening. So a third olive, for example, no surprises here. Matzah, right? We get mutza. That's the perfect, the imperfect. Uh, yumutza. No surprises there. Participle. Mimutza. No, no surprises there. It's everything that we would expect. Third hay verbs. Look at gala, for example. Gula, perfect. No surprises there. Imperfect. Yigule. Really no surprises there. Participle. Migule. No surprises there. Everything is exactly as we would expect. And then there's second gutturals. So again, second gutturals can have either virtual doubling, which is a way of saying no changes at all. Why don't they just say that? I don't know. Or compensatory lengthening, oblaut. And again, the reason for these is the second root consonant cannot take a dogesh forte if it is a guttural. So what do you do? Well, you get some sort of changes or nothing. So with virtual doubling, which is a way of saying nothing, uh, before we saw nacham. So in the perfect, nucham. Well, we don't see the dogesh, but we do see the kibbutz. So it's a dead giveaway. In the imperfect, yinucham. Again, no dogesh, but we still see the kibbutz. So it's a dead giveaway. In the participle, minucham. All right. So again, no dogesh, but we do see the kibbutz. So it makes sense, Pu'al, just as the name suggests, you're looking for that U class vowel, okay? Now with the compensatory lengthening, looking at Barak as before, or Barach, instead of a U, we're gonna get an O, an O class vowel, yeah. That's a little confusing, not gonna lie. So you really need to be aware of this one. We get a holum. Borach. Borcha. Borachta. Boracht. Borachti. Borchu. Borachtem. Borachten. Borachnu. That's the perfect. What about the imperfect? Yeborach. Tiborach. Tiborach. Tiborchi. Aborach. Yeborchu. Tiborachna. Tiborchu. Tiborachna. Niborach. And the participle, Miborach. Miborecheth. Miborachim, miborachoth. So because the resh, being a guttural, rejects the dogesh, the kibbutz, U-class vowel, becomes holum, O-class vowel. Otherwise, it's everything that we would expect to see. Now, last time we talked about how the PL also has the polel, the Pu'al has the Polal. So if the Pu'al is the passive counterpart to the PL, Polal 
is the passive counterpart to the polel. Here's what it looks like in the perfect. Romam. Roma. Romamta. Romamt. Romamti. Romu. Romamtem. Romamten. Romamnu. The polal is largely identical to the polal with slight changes in the in the vowel pointings. Otherwise, they look pretty much identical. Context is king. Thank you for watching. This week we covered puwal. Next week we cover hifil. See you then.